Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I want to say thank you guys for watching. Uh, you guys are always great. Um, the channel just keeps growing. It's all thanks to you guys, and uh, I want to appreciate that. Uh, just so you guys know, I'm serious. I love you guys. Take that however you will. Um, don't make it weird. <laughs> Uh, so I want to get into today's video topic, and it's kind of a, a a unique one, and I think it's one that most people could agree with, but they probably don't realize that they do, and that is going to be the forgotten content of Warframe, and by forgotten I mean it's not forgotten by the community per se, even though some people might agree it is, but more so by the devs themselves. So I want to start off with Call over here. We're at Call's camp, and um, Call is one of the, the reasons I say that, that we have forgotten content. Now, a lot of people don't like Call, but they don't like Call because of the Argon Crystal, or Archon Crystal, not Argon. Thank you. Anyways, but people don't like doing his missions because you run around as like this dude and you, you shoot some things and you... you... Okay. You know, call. I'm just gonna leave you alone. So you you run around this call and you do his missions. Um, I think it's niche and it's cool, but so many people don't like it because they have to do it you know once a month to get their archon chart. But one of the things I think they could have done with call is give him more missions. So you're not running like the same three or four or however many missions he has because they're not very many. But you do those on repeat, and the only thing that changes really is the uh, challenges. And once you've done all the challenges, there really isn't anything left. And so it's just weird that he's here, but he hasn't got any updates. I mean, literally, the, the most relevant call has been is, like, New War and Veilbreaker. And after that, I mean, the only reason people even play him still is for the Archon Shard, which is moving to another vendor anyways. So, yeah, it's weird that he exists. I don't think it's a problem that he exists. I think it's cool that we have, like, different forms of gameplay, like it's like a mini game or whatever. And some people might say his missions take a little too long, and that's fine, but considering you're only playing them once a week, I mean, is it really that long? I do see Call having some type of relevancy in the future at some point. Maybe they do something for him. We don't know. But yeah, at this point, he's just kind of forgotten about. No one really cares about him, and not many people like him. I don't think that was his name. I think it was Viso or Viso, whatever. They just, <laughs> anyways. Uh, so yeah, let's go on to the next topic. So here we are. Duvieri is also kind of been forgotten about, which is interesting because you know we have the Lone Story, which is basically if you want to do the experience, but just really short. Um, but Duvieri's been forgotten about. I think the last update that came to Duvieri was when they added the Jackal or when they added uh, Kulavo. Uh, or Kulervo, whatever you want to pronounce his name is. I don't care. You know, this whole expansion that got dropped, and nothing new about it has come out since it dropped, which, you know, it's over a year old now. Uh, I still like Devere. I think Devere is pretty fun to get into, especially if you're uh, just playing around with your friends. Uh, Devere is also a really good way to get people into Warframe. Uh, it's also kind of misleading, I think, because if your experience with Devere is that you just play Devere, and then you bring your friend to just play Devere constantly, well, then are they really playing Warframe or are they playing Daviri? You know, like, that's kind of the uh, the question to be asked here. I Like I said, I do like Daviri, and I do think as far as the circuit is concerned, the circuit definitely has a place in the game and can be expanded upon always. Like, uh, with the Steel Path circuit, um, always being, uh, you know, getting new Incarnans and stuff like that. Uh, I wouldn't even mind if the Steel Path circuit, which I should be able to pick my rewards. I haven't done that yet. Um, but... If, you know, we could get, like, uh, Archon Shards as one of our picks. But, you know, if you could pick, like, say, you can pick one red, one blue, and one yellow or something like that. I, I think that would be ideal. If you could pick, and so you could pick, like, two Tau for, or not two Tau, uh, two regular Archon Shards or something like that in here. That also give you a reason to keep playing this. Because as it is right now, what are you doing it for? Uh, probably the Rifle Riven and the Kuva. And that's a really weird reason to keep playing Steel Path, in my opinion. 
Uh, obviously, if you don't have your incarnates, uh, then get them. Um, they are, you know, they are what they are. I'm gonna go ahead and pick up mine for the week. But, um, yeah, I mean, they are what they are. And, uh, I like the incarnates. I think they are one of the best additions to the game, period. You got a six-week rotation for all your incarnates, and sure, yeah, you play the thing, you know, however, like, you know, two hours, two and a half hours, however long it takes you to complete your steel path circuit, and that's basically it. Now, obviously, you know, we have a regular circuit. If we go, uh, we can pick, you know, our Warframe and stuff like that, which is cool, but, you know, if it's a Warframe that's on a planet, like, this rotation is ass. Like, I don't need any of these characters, so. For new players, you know, regular circuit can be good for, like, the frames you can get, but if the frame is, say, like, Hildren or Garuda and you need resources from uh, Orb Valis and Fortuna, then it doesn't really matter if you got them or not. Because you still have to go farm those materials. It's not like, you know, just the normal, you know, circuits and whatnot, like this shit. So, I do think that's kind of something that Daveri will fail at. Or, it has failed at. Uh, will continue to fail because that's just how the, the characters were implemented. So, you can only pick so many, you know, frames. And, you know, 10 weeks, 3 frames, that's 30 frames. And there's 55 in the game. So, clearly not all of them are in here. Um, I'm pretty sure at least that's the case. I could be wrong. Um... But yeah, so Dubiri's just been forgotten about. And that's weird. Uh, I'm not saying it needs every, like, single update, but, you know, when a new frame drops, you know, throwing them in the pool or the rotation cycle, I don't think is inherently a bad thing. And also dropping in new incarnates once in a while could be very beneficial. Uh, and outside of that, like, the actual experience and lone story, I think, needs um, something new to it for you to keep coming back. Because... Really, there's no reason to do these, and the only reason you even play the experience is so you can get your materials for your incarnates and shit like that. So, even in that regard, that's kind of weird to even do those, and for, like, Lone Story or the experience, you're only going to really go there for the few challenges that you need, and Clairvo, I guess? That's probably it that I can think of, because most people are going to end up spending their time in the circuit. Here we are in my dojo, and uh, as you can see, this is my Railjack, uh, my Tempestari, and um, Railjack is one of the things that has also been forgotten about, and uh, it's pretty easy to see why. I mean, it the way it launched was in a very horrible state, uh, and I think a lot of people still have that kind of bad taste in their mouth, but overall, I like Railjack. I think... The fact this is even a feature of the game is impressive. I mean, you know, this was Starfield before Starfield, uh, you know. <laughs> and it's just kind of interesting that this exists, but it, there's nothing done with it. Now, I mentioned at the very beginning, uh, when I was doing my intro, that some of these might have relevancy later. I know, I believe uh, Steve uh, from DE basically mentioned that Railjack might be coming back at some capacity. Which I'm happy for, because the fact this is in the game, this is an entire, like, new mechanic, this whole system was built from the ground up, and was essentially left to die, is pretty abysmal. You know, when you look at, like, Call or, um, Duviri, as I even mentioned, those are nowhere near as, like, technically impressive as, uh, Railjack. I mean, you literally fly a ship around in space, and sure, you can compare it to Arcwing in a lot of ways, but... You know, Arcwing's also not very popular, but there's also not really many Arcwing missions, and the ones that do exist, I mean, they're not very difficult. So, it's just, Railjack is such a cool feature that has been completely forgotten about, and hopefully it will come back. I like Railjack. Uh, I enjoy playing Railjack. But, yeah, it's been forgotten about, and I, I would like to see more. Uh, I think we're going to get more. I hope we do. And Railjack does need some fixes, some, like, tuning, some overhauls, uh, definitely a lot more missions. There is not enough Railjack missions uh, in the star chart. Um, and also, the upgrades that you get, there's not many. Like, there's not many mods to Railjack when you, you know, look at the uh, the upgrades. You know, there's not really much here. Um, I mean, there's a lot for what it is, but, I mean... They're all pretty standard. I mean, this is basically a build you'll see on everyone's, you know, setup. Uh, and this is a zero form of build, by the way. So, this is pretty much what you'll see everybody running. And, um, outside of, 
you know, your turrets and what you pick, there really isn't much, like, variety either. Um, yeah, I, I run, like, the blasters and stuff like that because I just think they're more fun to use than just the, the laser pointers. But, yeah, and then, you know, you got your other components here for, you know, your speed and your your uh, hull and whatnot. But, again, this is pretty standard. Like, this is what most people will be running. You have the, the Zetki and the Vidar are basically what everyone runs. So, there's really nothing here, and as far as intrinsics go, which I need to, like, finish out all my intrinsics, but I don't, I just don't care enough, because there's just not enough content of Railjack to, to complete all your intrinsics. You know, the thing is, with Duviri, at least you have a reason to keep coming back for weeks and upon weeks. Railjack, you can literally do all those missions in, like, one week, and you m might have half your intrinsics complete. So yeah, Railjack does need more missions, uh, does need more implications. Um, I think the Tempest Ari quest was a really good one, uh, and the fact we're not going to get anything like that, um, uh, or we haven't got anything like that, I should say, is pretty sad. Uh, I think most people would agree Tempest Ari was a really good quest. So, or the Call of Tempest Ari. So yeah, more Railjack would be great. So, here we are at the Zeremon. And, uh, yes, I would throw the Zeremon into Forgotten Content. And the reason why is because the Zeremon is really interesting. Uh, depending on when you come to the Zeremon, if you're like a day one, you know, uh, Zeremon player, then you might still enjoy this. But if you're just out of the new war and you're still trying to complete your star chart so you can link steel paths, so you can get your arbitrations, you probably just breezed through this quest line, got all your nodes here, and then moved on. Um, and I think that's kind of sad, because the Zeremon has a lot of work put into it. It's also the only area in the entire game, arguably, you know, the Undercroft with Duviri, that looks like this. In which, you know, the Undercroft is literally just the Zeremon, so it's kind of funny. Void Cascade is the most profitable game mode in the entire game, and it is not even close. The amount of arcanes that you can earn from this in Steel Path is hilarious. You play this for an hour, you've walked away with like 20 arcanes. I only come back here whenever I want to farm arcanes or I'm trying to make some quick platinum uh, by selling arcanes. Um, which is what I usually do when I'm doing Void Cascades, which I guess I, most people probably know that. If you didn't, uh, well now you know. Uh, good for you, man. Uh, I hate this thing. It looks so stupid. Why do you exist? I know you're my gardener and you make my Daviri plants grow and shit, but like... God, you're ugly. And finally, we're here at the Whisper in the Walls, or the Sanctum Anatomica, or whatever it's called. Um, obviously, we're looking at the Void here. Uh, there's a cool little Easter egg here. You can find little Entrati's, you know, pager thing he has here, and it beeps every now and then, like that. It's pretty cool. There'll probably be something to do with this at some point. I don't know what, but uh, it's just cool that it's here. Um... Now, the reason why we're here is because the Whisper in the Walls update is easily one of my favorites. Um, there's so much to do, and the way this place looks is just so captivating. And I got a massive frame dip there for a second, I don't know why. But it's just, everything is just so extravagant it looks great I, I love this place same thing with the Zeremon I didn't mention that I love the way the Zeremon looks as well but there's so much to do here which is interesting because as far as updates go this is by far one of the best and we have to think that's ourselves thank you anyways but uh, Netra cells are very profitable, and there's a reason to keep coming back. I mean, we had the five Netra cells we can do a week here, which is great. Again, more reason to come back. Same thing with the uh, Daviri. You know, there's a reason to go back to Daviri with the uh, you know, the Incarnate and stuff like that. You have that weekly, you know, incentive to come back, which is always good. And we're getting uh, even more content, which is basically just going to be more harder Netra cells, which means they're going to be even more profitable. And um, I really can't wait for that. I think. That'll be good, and over here, if you please. thanks, Lloyd. But I think all around, 
Whisper in the Walls is going to be one of the updates that is going to be the cornerstone for everything that Warframe has in the future. Not just lore-wise, but going forward, you're going to start seeing more systems like this where there's more incentive to go back and play it over and over and over and over, uh, which is good. And I think it's what Warframe needs, because as of right now, uh, what are you farming realistically on repeat whenever you're given the chance? Other than, like, you know, maybe Argon Crystals or, like, Oricon Cells or some shit, uh, depending on who you are, right? For most people, you know, once you get to this point in the game, the only thing you're after is Arcanes and Archon Shards. And... You know, I think that, and that's you know where I'm at, and most people will eventually get to at some point. But it's just it's really interesting to get to play all this and have a reason to go back to it, whereas a lot of the other content is just died off. Uh, and like I mentioned, Railjack earlier, Railjack is probably the the biggest example of that. I like Whisper in the Walls so much, and I'm glad that this is actually something that's here to stay, and not just as like oh they're gonna can it. That's not what I meant with like the railjack thing i meant like we're getting updates for this we're going to continue getting updates for this and future content is going to be structured more like this it's got to be otherwise you know why are you going to play the new content which i know warframe actually hit a rough spot a couple years ago and i think it's since duviri has definitely gotten out of it and uh i think duviri was a good turnaround for the game and uh the whisper in the walls just shows that to be true um it's only going to get better from here uh, unless you know, they find themselves in like another dip of bad development or whatever. But for the most part, I think if you get to play Wish from the Walls, you'll say this is probably your uh, your favorite update and uh, the best expansion of the game so far. I'm sure a lot of people said that about Daviri. I mean, I would have been one of them. I think Daviri was the best update at the time. Um, the game is going to only get better from here on out. Uh, I, see, guys, I don't make just negative content complaining about shit all the time. I, I just want to address issues where I see them... You know, the game's changed so much in its infancy. I mean, it's an 11-year-old game that we're talking about. And I I really want this game to continue to succeed. I mean, it's still really profitable. I mean, hell, this game pulled bigger numbers than Destiny. I know to bring Destiny into this conversation with Warframe is always, you know, like a hot-button issue. But as someone who's played both games for thousands of hours, in Warframe, the Destiny has is, you know, dungeons and raids, which... I mean, there used to be raids in Warframe, and they took them out because nobody knew how to access them, which is kind of hilarious, but... Uh, I, I... More team-based stuff like that, you know, where you actually want to work with your teammates, communicate, I think would actually benefit Warframe to some extent. Um, not that you should be able to be forced to have teams, but, you know, obviously communicating with people will obviously help. For example, if you have a Frost and a Steinax on your team, and you know they're both running their fourth augment, you know, like, okay, that's cool, but you guys are, like, doubling up on the same ability, essentially, is what you're doing, and what's the point? And so being able to communicate with, you know, a friend or, you know, a, a team, and, you know, what are you bringing, what are you using, how are you going to help uh, the team, how are we going to get through this content, I think it's really the only step that we can go further into making the game actually more difficult. Because, you know, with stuff like Viral Slash, we can't get any any higher in difficulty than we already have uh, unless you start adding new enemy types which is one of the things that Whisper in the Walls did uh, you know the Murmur uh, the Murmur is a great enemy faction I actually like them a lot except that snake thing that takes like a billion damage because like it's got like like an 80% damage reduction or whatever the hell it is it's just retarded but um all around uh, this is one of the best updates uh, I I highly doubt there's going to be anyone who disagrees with that statement anyways I'm going to stop yapping. Uh, thank you guys for watching. You guys are great. You're fantastic. You were here, probably listening to me this entire time. If you've made it this far, uh, you're a legend. Um, I'm sorry I wasted your time. I <laughs> uh, hope you guys have a good day. Great week. Uh, amazing month. The best year of your life. Uh, and with that being said, um, thank you guys for watching.